So uh, we'll start with Jeet. He's the marketing director for Playtico Montreal. They're the developer of uh, World Series of Poker. Uh, Jeet's been in the industry a long time, previously at EA, uh, called me Autodesk. Oracle, yes. Uh, yep, and uh, you know, Jeet is on the content committee, so uh, he's one of the reasons that we're up here today, so thanks, Jeet. Uh, next up, Matt Widows, uh, recently uh, moved on, and he's at King now as the director of performance marketing. Hey, Amen? Yeah. yeah. Uh, previously, Matt was at Zynga, so. Uh, next up, Owen O'Donoghue from uh, Facebook. Owen's been at Facebook for six years now. Uh, or over six years, right? Yeah, it's been quite a while. So he's uh, he's running the mobile games team there, and uh, yeah, we're happy to have him. He's our authority on the panel today from Facebook. So uh, ready your questions at the end. Last but not least, uh, Filippo De, De Rose from Pixelberry. So uh, Filippo says he's been learning how not to do UA for about six years, but uh, we'll, we'll have to check him on that one. Uh, in addition to being a, a husband and father, uh, he's been you know on both sides of the fence really. Like you've been uh, you know, a vendor, and you're, now you're on uh, the development side, which is pretty cool. So, uh, really quickly, so like the, the topic today is, is broadly Facebook UA, but we're really talking about what's new uh, in the last, I would say, six months on Facebook, and like what's really working. Uh, and and you'll, you'll get to hear from you know, some of these top companies here exactly what they're doing that, that's helping them win. And I think it's something that you know, it's going to be pretty applicable for you going forward. Like it's it's uh, uh, going to be hopefully a blueprint for you in 2017 to be successful on Facebook. So, uh, so like I think we're going to start off by talking about um, one of the most successful new products, uh, which is app event optimization. So, let me grab my notes here. Okay, so, all right. So, um, yeah, so I spoke about, you know, this is one of the big changes, um, app event optimization. Um, app event, I'll, I didn't introduce myself, first of all. Um, I'm John Agano, I'm the head of sales and business development at Bidalgo. I've been there about two years. Been in the game industry about 14 years. Um, and uh, yeah, like Bidalgo is, you know, pretty much the leading Facebook marketing partner uh, when it comes to games, and uh, uh, we worked very closely with Facebook, and we were actually very early in on the app event optimization uh, alpha stage. So we've been supporting it for a very long time now. So I actually kind of forget when it became publicly available. Do you remind me of it? I think September, October. Okay. Well, it was publicly available, so it's it's not a beta product. It's like, hey, here's a new feature. It's I think it's proven that you'll, you'll, you'll probably want to talk about that now. Right, right. So, like, let's start out, you know, for those of you, like, can you raise your hand in the audience if you are buying on Facebook with AEO? Yeah, a fair amount of people. Fair amount. Um, for those of you who don't know, like, let's talk about the basics here. Uh, essentially, in the Facebook SDK, you can implement what are called app events. Uh, it's pretty easy to do, but um, it's a PSA for myself. Please, please do this. Um, many clients come to me and they don't have it implemented. And right now, if you don't have it, you end up missing out. Um, so this is a look at like kind of uh, what you get from that. You know, the app events are tied to a specific action in the in your app, uh, and I think most commonly people uh, hook up purchases, and that allows you to bid down the funnel. And you're now instead of bidding on an install, you're bidding on that action, which is could be purchase. So um, let's uh, look a little bit deeper. Raise your hand if you've ever written a line of code in your life. Yeah, there's plenty of people. So there's no excuse uh, to come to me and say, oh, it's going to be a month before I can implement app events. This is it. This is ending today. You guys can write this code. Come on. There's the docs right there. So, um, so Let's move now to the panel, like uh, talking like in more detail here about app event optimization. Uh, you know, at Vidalgo, like we've seen great growth here. Um, it's I think we can say it's roughly fifty percent of what we're doing now. Um, and you know, what my question is, I guess, for the panel, to kick this off. Um, 
you know, how has this changed the auction overall? And like, what is you know, what can you share about what your mix of uh, app event optimization to mobile app install objective is? Uh, let's I guess talk to G first. Sure. Um, so yeah, thanks again for sticking out. We'll be quick, swift, and we'll get through this. Promise. Um, so we, our, our share of app event, as you said, AEO has changed the changed the world uh, in, in in some ways. Uh, we are about fifty-five to sixty percent uh, of of AEO versus my is that the MAI mobile app installs. Uh, my only word of caution about this is some people, companies have gone ninety percent, ninety-five percent. It's a great pool where you're targeting events such as purchasers and whatnot. But uh, th there is this other pool as well, and we don't want to miss out on that. So it's always uh, you know uh, uh, we move fast with caution. So the mobile app installs is also important for us because we that the, there are those purchasers and uh, you know the, that they, we don't want to lose out on. And beyond purchasing, in our game, uh, liquidity is huge. So we also care for those retentive users, and and that the quality is also factored by how often they come up, uh, the D two, D seven, D thirty. So that's uh, sort of our ratio for app events to mobile apps installs. Right, it make, makes sense too. Like with poker, you need that liquidity, so you don't necessarily need just purchasers. So, uh, great. Like, uh, let's go next to Filippo. What, what can you tell us? Uh, first of all, I think like quickly for everyone, Pixelberry. Uh, what's what's the game that's been a hit for you recently? Uh, so, um, up until August, Pixelberry was known for High School Story, very tween focused audience, and now. Um, they're becoming increasingly famous for choices. I'm wearing the corporate. It's a nice jacket. You have to do it. Yeah. Um, so this is Pixelberry is famous for narrative-driven content, and um, we're trying to age our demographic compared to the past, but not ignoring the tween audience. Um, and choices is. Uh, People have given various examples. I've heard, you know, it's a digital um, bookstore. It's similar to Netflix. The classic one, no, it's the copy of the episode from Pocket Gems. No, it's not. Very no, different. Uh, it's your own that's, that's the easiest comparable, I suppose. So, um, so yeah, as far as AEO is concerned, uh, it's interesting because we're, we're quite similar to G, I suppose. We have uh, roughly 50% at this point in terms of uh, the spend that we focus on AEO. Uh, so there's definitely you know room for MAI and so on. Um, I think AEO still needs to develop because it needs a few more sophisticated events. So in our case, you know, Jeet was mentioning liquidity. In our case, there is things around you know how much people read, chapter consumption, book consumption, the genres they like. You know, and this is obviously a very granular type of instrumentation, which AEO still needs to work on. But I'm sure Facebook will execute on that. There is no question about how Facebook can execute. Fifty percent sounds pretty solid to me. Um, next, we'll we'll throw to uh, Matt actually before we go to this slide. So Matt, before King, uh, I mean, you just joined King in January. I'm sorry, November. Yeah, something like that, right around the holiday. Um, you were at Zynga, and you, you actually have an official Facebook case study from your time there, uh, just showing incredible results from AEO. Uh, it's, it's up behind us right now, yeah. so if you want to... Yeah, I think um, you know, it was a, a big eye-opener for us because we, as you can see on, on this slide, uh, we did see a um, 2x CPI increase, but our cost per, um, per paying user went down, and we had four to five X on uh, on the return. So while costs went up, revenue went up, we were able to scale it. Um, uh, bigger conversions to install. So uh, the optimization did its job and they're continuing to tweak it. And nothing but good things to say about it for sure. Right, huge breakthrough for sure. So, uh, oh, and I don't know if you want to add anything uh, in terms of like more broadly what you've seen. Uh, yeah, I mean the TL, TLDR, I guess, uh, the session will be just, if you're not doing app event optimization, do it. 
and start with targeting purchasers. Um, you know, we, we, we do launch a lot of products every year um, for the mobile app ecosystem to help you find better, more engaged uh, people for, for, your, for your apps. And I think um, this year, you know, internally we call this a hero product. It, we've seen across the board in the gaming sphere, every single genre of game taking advantage of app event optimization, uh, particularly at the purchaser level. And, but Matt was talking that that performance is pretty similar for a lot of companies, so it's becoming a no-brainer um, thing to implement. What we're thinking, in terms of the ratio, it's difficult to know. I 100% agree, it, it, it shouldn't be all of that, because essentially what we're doing is we're saying, here's a signal where the top quality, we're really confident, we're really, really confident they're going to be payers. Um, but there's a lot of people out there who you may consider your game and you want to get in there as well. And the way we're beginning to think about app, app event optimization is, yes, go after purchasers. Eventually, you look at purchasers by value and look at other metrics. So what's the value of a D1 player? Uh, again, I'm going to use gaming, gaming parlance here. The value of somebody, if you have a casino game, they've taken 50 spins on a slot machine. Um, they may never have paid in another game before, they're less likely, but there's, there's still a value there that's probably greater than just an install. And we think that's going to be the next step is almost tiered app event optimization where your bid strategy is going to be different depending on the event. And we find it pretty exciting because, again, we think that could be another evolution of the product in 2017. Right. I had a quick counter question. So is uh, targeting on price ranges and stuff also in the roadmap or anything you can share on the... There's nothing I can tell that, that you know in terms of the roadmap we shared today, um, but you do have a lot of control on your side. So, you know, deciding to um, bid on, you, you know, the event doesn't just need to be a purchase; it can be a purchase of a certain amount. So, you can decide that, and obviously, you know, move to manual bidding on this uh, helps you be more accurate and at least lock in a certain yield per customer per event. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what the future holds. <laughs> Great. So uh, let's actually we'll keep it with Owen here. Talk about the uh, next new product that Facebook launched, kind of alongside uh, app event optimization, uh, worldwide targeting. Um, this has been phenomenal for people who have been stuck inside tier one countries, couldn't get value in tier two, tier three. Uh, it's been a big breakthrough. And I think like I want to visualize here. Um, you know, this is currently what you're you're looking at geographically for for what you're buying. That's your reach. Uh, worldwide targeting allows you to do this essentially. So you really, really expand your reach. Uh, I think let's keep it with Owen if you can give like um, more, a little bit more detail on what worldwide targeting is exactly. Yeah, so, so it's essentially just making it very, very easy for you to pick an audience um, based on interest or say a custom audience based on a particular action you think they'll take. And just apply it worldwide, and you set your own language setting. Um, it's, it sounds easy. This has been a pretty challenging problem for a lot of, again, gaming companies. I prefer to say e-commerce. How do I really export or expand? Um, and how do I do that easily? Because there's a lot of cost to doing that. There's creative considerations. There is just setting up additional campaigns, budgeting how to do that. What we've seen with, with just adding the simple targeting option is that a lot of um, companies in the US, and um, in particular, and say, you know, I'm going to run this worldwide targeting. One campaign, one tick of a box. Um, we'll probably go into it, but we'll add on app event optimization, which was a hack actually by um, uh, two of our account managers who work with the Jam City crew and with the Zynga crew and Matt. We, they, they helped us figure that out. And essentially find all those payers across the world. And then, again, with English targeting, so it's not perfect, but what it has spun up is people are finding, hey, there's payers in. Know, Romania or in parts of South America, and from there you're able to make more, you know, a lot more intelligent business decisions. Actually, that market has done pretty well just from this targeting. I'll then break away and do separate targeting, but without maybe the initial costs. So it's been again not necessarily an intentional product, but combining worldwide with app and that optimization is just. Taken off as Definitely, well. yeah. Like, let's continue on with that um, combination of app event optimization worldwide targeting. Uh, I know there's there's people sitting here who had good uh, results there. Who wants to who wants to share? Maybe Filippo. Go ahead. 
Sure. Um, it's it's been definitely very beneficial to get into tier two, tier three smartly. Uh, Choices is a very tier one focused game, very tier one focused content, but there are pockets. I'm switching to your slide, Filippo. It's really exciting. So it, it's super exciting. Like Filippo just won't brag, so I'm gonna have to brag for him. Um, this is an overlay of their top grossing chart positioning with a anonymized spend graph. So you don't know exactly how much they spent. You only see the growth. Um, but yeah, they recently like cracked into the top 25 there. Um, we have the 26. But but please, Filippo, tell us. This is incredible. Thank you. How did how did you do this? This is amazing. Uh, one UA guy and one data guy. Sorry, Zynga. Uh, but, uh, um, the UA guy was me. No, but Bedalgo helped as well. Thank cool. you, Bedalgo. Thank you. Um, anyway, the point is that uh, Worldwide helped us get more pockets of really good users outside of Tier 1. Uh, and that's monetizing users. And it, you know, it made us become more sophisticated with likes and so on. Right, yeah, like Worldwide plus AEO was a huge breakthrough for you guys and you know like at some point that was like a major inflection to drive you up to the top there. Uh, we're in lower on time so let's move through a little quicker. I just wanted to share with you guys so if you're not that familiar with choices I get you a little bit familiar with it. This is an example of their creative. It's very simple really. The game is about making choices. You know? uh, Would you choose? <laughs> the middle, the middle, the middle image, just for the record, the middle image was Picnic with John Gagnon and Aldo. And the CTR dropped when we put John's face. <laughs> A-B testing, always be testing. Uh, here's another great example. It's, uh, you know, it's all about making choices. And uh, it, it, what we've seen, it, like, it just has such a broad uh, appeal, really. Uh, one, one last one. I, I, the credit's been amazing. Uh, you know, it's, it's about making choices. In fact, like so, here we have uh, two examples of creative uh, crowd pleasers. It's it's really an amazing game. So, I think uh, the downloads are going to increase just at just just the second. So, I'm sure they're going to download. Yeah. Right. So, you know, it's. Uh, it, it all starts with product market fit, in my opinion. You know, but you could never have done what you did uh, without a great product. Choices is an amazing product, and when you put you know top top notch marketing on top of it, you become world class. So, uh, congrats on becoming world class, for the world. It's really, no, really good. I, I actually thank you, John. I, I think you raised a very good point um, because a lot of people say, you know, how many UA people do you need, and uh, what do you need to do in UA, and so on. Um, like you said, I'm learning how not to do UA. The point is, uh, if, if there's no great product, there's no UA. There's no Facebook, there's nothing. Because um, you can really be a finance geek, make the economics work out, and lie through your teeth. But at some point, somebody's going to discover the truth. <laughs> so, right, there has to be another you know, product market fit. Right, yeah, I mean, amazing marketing can only take a Crap products so far, yeah. but the, you know when you have the best of both worlds, you really can you know, can make it to the top. So, like continuing on with that, really quickly, man, we're running low on time. So, we did want to talk, you know, just more practically. Like we have some of the biggest companies up here, uh, just talking about you know how difficult it is to recruit, retain UA people today, in 2017, and then like how are you coping with that? You know, are you uh, in housing more, or using more partners, like uh, who wants to start? Sure, uh, I can take a crack at this. Uh, so second question first, it's a combination, uh, some in-house, some external. I, 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 if you look at Facebook advertising, it's a combination of so many things. Uh, you have to get the bidding right, you got to get the creatives right, you got the message and the targeting right. So not all elements all the time can be developed in-house 100% uh, of the time, so that's why we go. I think in-house, what works best is, and, and we have learned through a lot of mistakes, uh, a good a cadence between you know uh, creative guys, our BI guys, and the UA guys working together, 
and that has worked the best. And we, we also work closely with uh, you know Facebook and, 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 and partners such as yourself, uh, and and get the right mix and the right cadence. Uh, like for example, you know how often do you change your creatives? I think that the best practices is once or twice a week, and that that is not all easily available in house in your design. And the design team has to come up with concepts that work. They have to implement the things that have been working and and make the best creative that will give the best uh, you know quality. So uh, yeah, absolutely. That's uh, sort of my my response to it. I think one thing I'd add, and we were talking about this at the at the break is as it relates to retaining quality UA, um, I think it's important if you have a portfolio of products, uh, even if you don't, if you have a single game, if you have a team, to give people uh, experience in different areas. So sometimes people will segment by game and let somebody own everything, or somebody will segment by channel and they can go across all games. Um, but it's important to develop people and give them a reason to stay. And so nobody's going to stick around for three years doing network on social casino or on one vertical. Uh, so it's important to give people an ability to really learn across uh, channels and titles. Interesting. And the, and the last thing, and the best thing is everything is measurable. So all these people know what impact they're making to the to the game, to the company. It's just very, very transparent. Right, and I think that's, that's good guidance in general, right? Like connecting people's impact on their day-to-day -to, -day to the success of the company, for sure. So uh, it is about to be happy hour. I don't want to keep people... Uh, too long over. Uh, just before you leave, please remember these are the important takeaways right here. Uh, implement those app events, start using app event optimization. Once you have that, go global with worldwide targeting, combine it with AEO, and uh, you know, take these guys' advice. Keep testing everything you can all the time. Uh, do as much in house as you can. Use partners where you need uh, the help. Um, yeah. Uh, anybody else want to add anything? Because I, I think it's happy hour. So I'm going to get shot. We will take maybe one question, but you know, you can always. Oh, we got we got a question down front. Not allowed. <laughs> and city is not allowed. <laughs> yeah, I got one. Uh, so with AEO, most companies kind of bake in that you know the organics that they're going to get with paid user acquisition, and obviously AEO is the user cost is going to be a lot more expensive. Paid acquisition assumptions kind of the organics are going to match uh, what you're going to pay for paid user acquisition. Have you guys adjusted what you're able to pay for AEO users? Because probably the organic users won't be worth as much as the paid users. Okay, so AEO. your question is that the organics that come from yeah the, the organics you get with uh, if you're targeting pairs right. aren't going to match probably the you know LTV quality of those pairs. So you play around with trying to what you can actually pay if the organics aren't going to be at the same price. Sure. Anybody have a, have a good answer? Like, what can you pay when your LTV is being impacted by organics? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. So if, if yeah. you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, so measuring, like, the, the K factor of acquiring these paying players? Yeah, most people are, like, they, they assume that you're going to get, uh, you're baking into the cost of organics you get. So I'm wondering if, like, you're playing around with uh, the, Organics aren't sure. as much. Right. Yeah, I, I've seen a bit more stuff. I mean, we're actually getting back to people factoring in more organics now. That K factor is becoming important again. I am only seeing it though. They're, they're not measuring it uh, at an LTV uh, per organic level, but they are baking in, particularly when they hit like a top 10 of a category, they are baking in another install and trying to measure that on top. So if, if with this, if we're, if we're a top game, they are seeing uh, more organics. Um, they're not equating the same value at all to um, uh, what they're seeing. It's still definitely a work in process. But what's interesting, because a lot of people have, you know, particularly beyond launching games, have forgotten about the organic element. We're hearing more and more conversations. People are beginning to bake them back into their acquisition models. I know, I know you guys are pretty advanced, probably doing it for, for a long time, but more and more companies are able to do that, which is which is great. And they're figuring that out at that section, which honestly has been a challenge for, for the last couple of years. Great. I think that'll be it then. You know, feel free approaches will be around in happy hour. Thank you guys and thank you guys. It's a privilege working with you. See you tomorrow. Awesome. Thank you every thank you very much everybody. Uh, come back tomorrow.
And we have a very fun event by Liftoff that if you heard of the Family Feud, we're going to have the Mobile Feud. We're going to have app marketers versus vendors, so it's going to be really fun. Tomorrow is the way more fun day with some creative panels. Have a great night. See you all at the Alchemist Bring Your Lanyards.